Where are we at? We're in or something. I don't think you've got to go that far. That's all overrated, mate. Just got to come up here north coast of New South Wales and look at the spectacle. And when you're up at Seal Rocks here, you've got to go to the Holy Goat Vintage Coffee Caravan Man, mm -hmm. just up on top of the hill next to the general store. Let's see if we get a coffee. We've got the real ones. What colour is this? Blue drinking voucher. <laughs> okay, hot tips about Seal Rocks. What's the go? Weekends, flat chat. If you can Easy get up there, if you can get up there during the week, much better option. There's hippie vans everywhere. Now, when I say hippie vans, they're not hippies at all. They're just white vans. So all the young people in their white vans, good on them for getting out there. It's not just young people. It's everyone yeah. in all age groups these old days. Mm. You know, in every kind of white van you can imagine. So get up there during the week is a good option. Mm. Okay. Now, there's only two caravan parks there. Yep. One so, is on the bay, the first bay as you come into Seal Rocks. The other one... What's that called? Reflections. All right, so we got Reflections and then you've got the... Uh, treachery Camp. Treachery Camp, that's where we stayed. Which is where we stayed. And that allows campfires. And that's yeah. primitive bush camping behind the sand dunes. You are quite protected by the winds, but you still get a breeze there. Yeah, it's um, quite good. So it's, it's not, very dirty, though. It's sandy. Um, look, it's hard to get some flat spots. They're at a premium. But there is some green grass, so yeah. look around. So that's number one. Look, Seal Rocks doesn't have a pub. Oh yeah, look, no pubs, no, no restaurants. restaurants. There's a corner store and the little coffee caravan. Yep. They make uh, toasty or something. something. Just hasn't changed forever. So it's the same as it is now. It must have been like 40 or 50 years ago, easy. Yeah. One of the few um, little coastal towns that are still the same as they were. Very little signal. Yeah, you won't get much place. much boat signal. Down the northern end of the main beach, you might. Yeah. We had some signal there, but everywhere else, forget it. You can book a holiday house up here too. We've got a couple of friends. They've come here for forever, ever since we've known them. Yeah. I don't know, 20 years or something. Every Christmas. Every Christmas, weeks. two or three weeks. Whole family. Family comes. I don't know. Overlooks the beach. It's fantastic. It's an old shack. Fisherman's Cottage. And Fisherman's Cottage, about two grand a week. <laughs> that was pre-COVID prices. So, I don't know how you market. get one of those, but um, yeah, there'd be a waiting list, I'd imagine, around here, because it looks like there's only 20 or 30 houses here along the beach. So this beach driving caper, it's all about two things. Just some nice, steady momentum, not too much jerky acceleration and then having your tire pressures right and the tire pressures are all about what type of sand you're on how loose powder it is what time of the day in the morning sands likely to be harder than in the afternoon when all the sun's dried the moisture out so we're just going to start at 20 nice and easy we've been to Fraser Island you know in the Gala Rocks you want to get yourself up there if you haven't been there that's a real experience um, like eight psi yeah on a day that was like 35, you couldn't even walk on the sand, and it was like it was just this fine, dusty, bull dust type of sand. Let the tyres down. Now, there's all sorts of gizmos to do this, including sticks. Don't do the sticks bit. However, these Camp Boss tyre deflators have got to be the best invention of all time. You just set your PSI to where you want it. We drive around about 40, so we're going to go to 20 straight away from this for this beach right take no chances so you wind it down to 20 don't know whether you can see any of that at all do it up now by the time i put this first one on and go around to the other four put that on okay just pull that out now that'll keep going till it's down to 20. yeah 
So let's see what this beach is here. We'll probably get down there and be like a highway or something. Sure. Got the radio on in case anyone uh, wants to talk to me. But you can see down there in front of you, right, there's the soft sand and there's a bit of hard sand before the water. So we're gonna go just to the edge of that soft sand there. See what it's like, it looks a bit powdery. We've engaged our center diff lock. So we're not in low range, we'll just hut out. We're going down the hill as well, so you never know who's around the corner. So we'll get out there. It's quite windy, isn't it? It is really windy. Woohoo. When you're on this soft sand and you've stopped, yeah. when you go to accelerate off, you just want to nice and smooth. Make sure you get some momentum. Sort of past the point that if you accelerate, you're going to go forward rather than down in the sand. So we'll have a go at that. We're going to drive up the other end of the beach. See what happens up there. Oh. Just look out, look out for this kind of stuff here on the on the hard sand or what you think's the hard sand. You've got some water in that sand there. Now around that water could be anything either side of that water, could be a bit boggy. So don't drive through there unless you have to. Okay, we're leaving the beach now. It was still in high range with the center diff lock, so that should be okay to get out. Pretty soft and powdery, but the good thing with a ramp when you're going out of a beach, if you just feel like you're getting stuck and you give it a bit and it won't get going, just stop and then reverse back down and have another go. Choose another gear. We'll see how we go. delicate with it. Treat it with respect and it will look after you. Okay, we've been to the beautiful Seal Rocks Beach. Check that. Outstanding. Anyway, a bit, a bit red here on my whiteness. But, you got to go up to Sugarloaf Lighthouse, which is just up the top on the headland. So. Four hundred and fifty meters. What's going on here? Let's go. Easy stroll up here. Well, what do you know? A toilet halfway up the road. Go figure that. What's that? What's that all about? Yeah. Look at the colours. Look at the turquoise and green water. That is stunning. Imagine diving in there. Mm -hmm. You could also be sharp, eh? It's a nice cool walk up here, isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well, you're on the shade of a national park. National park. Forest. See down there, that's where we went for a little drive this morning. Yeah. Probably can't hear a thing. It's howling. It's, um, yeah, way different to over the other side of this headland. See your rocks cottages. Yeah, that'd be fascinating, wouldn't it? Amazing. But you have great views. Mm. Seal Rocks Cottages. Fascinating. Seal Rocks Lighthouse. No, that's not what it's called. Sugarloaf Lighthouse. Sugarloaf Point. Cottages. Cottages. You can walk up this hill. You know. Super steep. I don't know how you know whether it's steep. See that fence? It's about how steep it is. We could have waited 10 minutes. 45 degrees. Come on! 
one wine per meter. Oh, God, I only Guess what? what? There are more steps. Just up here, let's go. <laughs> Hold on! There's a sign telling you to hold on. Strong gusts of wind. Take you away. Let's get out of the wind. That's quite good. Looking over there to the right, that's Seal Bay. Yeah. Oh, where we were. That's correct. That's why the great water. Yeah, and looking down there. So we're right up the top of the lighthouse now. Spectacular view. Big southerly blowing today, but who cares? You know, they've lost, they've lost about 20 plus ships off this point. 20 ships? With or without the lighthouse? It's a lot of ships. Probably more, who knows. This is spectacular. It's like the bottom of Tasmania. There's colours down there. Special. Well worth the 45 degree climb to get up here. Bit of a over here. Just coming down from the lighthouse up there. Spectacular. Make sure you get up there. All the way up there. There's only a few stairs. But you can't actually go through the door, but you can go up that first one. Mm, very nice. Lots of native shrubs and bushes. So this is it. This is the signal signal house. A few modern day antennas up there. Signal house, look down there. Look at the way that rock is formed. Serious activity in the earth when that happened. What's that island called out there? Seal Rock is named after Seal Colony. Ah, right. So Seal Rock is named after a seal colony. Is that yeah. correct? From a colony of seals that once lived here. Following extensive hunting in the 19th century, seals are now protected and can be seen in the area from time to time. The rocky offshore islands and caves of sea, seal rocks and little seal rocks are protected within a sanctuary zone which is critical habitat for the grey nurse grey nurse shark, which is endangered. You can never get perspective on the on the video. Look here. There we go, well that's down to the backyard. So this is the accommodation. So you can stay up here. Beautiful. Okay, this Sugarloaf Holiday cabin up at the lighthouse. Sugarloaf Point Lighthouse. Sugarloaf Point Lighthouse. Yeah, so we just ran into a guy. He's staying here. Four nights. And what did he say? Four nights for a couple, about a grand. So you got to bring all your own food and drink and everything, and I guess you get a nice view, do you? Complete seclusion. Get to look at, that, get to look at those nice rock formations over there. And it is secluded, so I guess you're all by yourself, aren't you? Oh, and you get to drive up this road, and oh, yeah. everyone else has to walk up. Yeah, you do. What's wrong with the window? She's not even driving, and she wants a window clean. Well, you're the one that gives me the GoPro, goodness and then you make me, me feel mad at the dirty window. Okay, we've got the things going now, right. The soapy suds. The beautiful beast juices are coming out. <laughs> <laughs>